What's up travelers, Submission Kid here. Today's video topic is going to be Nilu. Nilu is an upcoming 5 star Hydro character from Sumeru, and she is quite a unique and interesting character. I would say very versatile and probably the character with the most complicated kit that we've ever seen, especially her elemental skill. So that's why I'm going to do a video overview of her skills before we jump into things like her team compositions, meta viability, whether or not you should pull for her, and so on. So let's jump right into it. We'll start with her normal attacks, and being the unique character she is, even her normal attacks are different from other sword users in that it only has three hits. It's a three hit combo. It looks sleek and clean. Most other sword characters, they're usually five hit combos or something like that. Maybe four, maybe six, but usually five. Whereas Nilu only has three. One more thing to keep in mind is that Nilu's normal attacks scale off her, well, attack, like pretty much every other character's normal attacks. But Nilu as a character, that is to say her skill and burst, scale off her HP. So as with Yelan, you don't really want to be using Nilu's normal attacks all that much if you care about damage. Nilu's burst is also fairly straightforward. It just spawns a huge watery lotus flower which deals area of effect hydro damage in a pretty big area and it marks any enemies with lingering eon which causes them to take more hydro damage after a second or two. It has a burst cost of 70 energy and a cooldown of 18 seconds which is fairly average as far as elemental bursts go. So you can pretty much understand her burst as something that does a lot of damage in a short time frame over a wide area. It also applies Hydro and looks really pretty, but that's about it. So like I said, pretty straightforward. But now let's get into Nilu's elemental skill. This is the complicated part of her kit. So when you first use her skill, what it does is it sends her into pirouette state. Now in this state, all of her attacks become Hydro infused and do Hydro damage. Pirouette state can technically last for up to 10 seconds, but for most players it will probably end way before that. Now here's where things get really complicated, so make sure you turn on your brains. So when Nilu is in pirouette state, she can do one of two, let's call them moves. She can either do her normal attack, or she can cast her elemental skill again. And the third move she does determines what happens next. So let's say Nilu uses her elemental skill three more times after entering pirouette state. And of course, remember, you use her elemental skill to get into pirouette state in the first place. So you use her skill to enter pirouette state, and then you use her skill three more times. This move set is called Whirling Steps, and at the end of it, you spawn a water wheel, or Tranquility Aura, which is basically kind of like Barbara's elemental skill, a circle of water that follows you around, except it has a higher area of effect and it doesn't heal. So that's what happens if you use her elemental skill three times after entering pirouette state. Now, if you use Nilu's normal attack three times after entering pirouette state, that moveset is called Sword Dance and it will put her into Lunar Prayer Stance. What this does is that it gives her another 8 seconds of Hydro-infused normal attacks, and for the third hit of each of her normal attack combos, she will spawn a Watery Moon, which, appropriately, looks like a crescent moon made of water that does damage in a straight line. One thing to note is that any damage she does while in this state is considered elemental skill damage. So any characters that buff your normal attack damage or infuse your normal attacks won't work because these aren't considered normal attacks, they're considered elemental skill attacks. If you are liking the video at this point or you learned something new, a like and a subscribe would be amazing. Now let's do a quick recap of Nilu's elemental skill. So, starting out, you use your elemental skill, or press E, to enter pirouette state. When you are in pirouette state, all the damage Nilu does is considered elemental skill damage and is hydro infused. At this point, Nilu has one of two options, either sword dance or whirling steps. Sword dance is the name of her normal attack combo while in pirouette state, which will put her into lunar prayer stance. While in lunar prayer stance, 
her normal attacks will continue to be hydro-infused for 8 more seconds, and the third hit of each of her normal attack combos will spawn a watery moon, which does hydro damage in a straight line. On the other hand, if Nilu instead uses her whirling steps combo while in pirouette state, then that will instead spawn a watery circle, or tranquility aura, which is a ring of water that follows your active character around and applies hydro to any enemy nearby. What this means is that Nilu can play like a main DPS, kind of like Ayato or Raiden, where their attacks are infused with an element for a short duration of time, or Nilu can also be a Hydro Applier, think Kokomi or Barbara, except minus the healing and it follows you around, kind of like Kaya's burst. Not only that, but you could even argue that Nilu is viable as a quick swap DPS, due to how incredibly condensed her elemental burst damage is. So that just means it does a lot of damage within a short time frame, not to mention the incredible area of effect. Now at this point, you're probably thinking something like, wow, Nilu is one of the most versatile and best characters ever. The only problem is that Mihoyo seems intent on forcing Nilu into a certain niche, and they did that by gimping her. Well, actually, let me correct myself. It's more like they buffed her so much for her niche that she effectively becomes kind of less than ideal for everything outside of her niche, which is the Bloom reaction. Now under a normal Bloom reaction, so that's when Dendro and Hydro meet, a Dendro core will be spawned, which will explode after a short amount of time. You can of course also react the Dendro core with either Electro or Pyro, which will result in the Hyper Bloom and Burgeon reactions respectively, but we won't talk about that in this video. Anyway, Dendro cores are supposed to explode after a short amount of time, but Nilu has a passive that makes them explode immediately for a wider area of effect. That is basically what Nilu is built around. This passive also grants 60 elemental mastery to the party, but it requires that all of Nilu's party members either be Dendro or Hydro. Let me say that again in case it's not sinking in. In order to utilize the thing that the entirety of Nilu's kit is built around, her passive which turns Dendro cores into bountiful cores, all of your teammates need to be either Hydro or Dendro. And given the lack of Dendro characters that are currently out, uh, even Tainari is a main DPS, so he's not going to work with Nilu, your two options are pretty much Dendro Traveler and Kale. What that means is that you have to run a healer with Nilu as your Hydro teammate. The reason you absolutely need a healer or shielder is because the Bloom reaction damages your own characters. So given that there is no Dendro healer, you are pretty much stuck with either Kokomi or Barbara or something like that as a healer for Nilu. Because remember, her teammates can only be Hydro or Dendro, otherwise her passive, which her entire kit is based around, doesn't activate. What this means is that until there is a Dendro healer, you cannot run Nilu with Yelon. And Yelon, at least so far, is the absolute best Hydro teammate for Nilu since she also scales off HP, and if Nilu and Yelon are in the same party, then you get Hydro Resonance, which, if you recall, now increases your max HP instead of your healing. And since both Nilu and Yelon scale off HP, Hydro Resonance will increase their damage output by quite a bit. So what I'm basically trying to say is that Nilu lacks proper supports to function at this point in time, at least optimally. Now, obviously, if you are someone who just likes Nilu as a character, so you like her design, you like her personality, you like how she looks, her animations, whatever, then just pull for Nilu. Just be aware of the fact that you won't really be able to use her to her full potential until she gets her supports, so namely a consistent off-field dendro applier and a dendro healer. At this point, some of you might be thinking, well, in that case, it's probably a good idea to skip Nilu at first and then pull her after all of her supports are out. What I would caution is that if you actually just really like Nilu as a character, you might want to just grab her and then get her supports as they're released. Because who knows? I mean, it could just be like Kazuha, where it took literally a year for him to rerun. 
So I'll do a deeper dive on Nilu, such as her team compositions, her passives, and whether or not you should pull for her on another video, because this video was really just meant to be an explanation of how her kit works. But as always, I just kind of kept on rambling. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.